Before I learned genetics, I didn't even know that albinism existed. I had never seen one. And if I did see one, I thought that was a Muzungu. I used to see them like sick people. I could feel pity for them. I, whenever I see them, I feel so like they should be in a lot of pain. I, I think their skin is greatly uh, weaker than mine. <laughs> And no one was explaining what was wrong with a person with albinism. As a teenager, I got to know someone, a myth, that they had supernatural powers. Albinism in Uganda is associated with a lot of myths and misconceptions. Persons with albinism face challenges of stigma, discrimination, isolation and in certain societies they are a target of ritual sacrifice. Until recently, the government of the Republic of Uganda recognized albinism as a disability. I think that would be a starting point to help our people this categorization. So I want also to instruct our committee on human rights. The human rights of the albinos must come out. Don't just put them with everybody else. They must come out in their own right because of their social needs. The Committee on Gender Labor and Social Development, the Certificate of Gender and Equity, all these are related to our work to ensure that uh, the issues of the albinos are brought out. Albinism is a genetic condition that is manifested at birth where a person completely lacks or partially lacks melanin with evidence of pale or ash gray eyes no color in the hair and skin. The most um, common presentation is that one of the skin, which is very obvious, but we also have the presentation that only affects the eyes. That gives us the two presentations, uh, the one which is ocular, cutaneous albinism, that, con uh, that consists of both the eyes and the skin, and ocular albinism that only will affect the eyes. In this circumstance, um, the changes that are visible, both in the eyes and in the skin, are connected with the absence of the cells that produce the pigment uh, melanin, and those cells are called melanocytes. Apart from lack of pigment and visual impairment, persons with albinism are as normal as any other human being and should be accorded equal opportunities in all aspects of life. People with albinism are considered very normal. Normal in the sense of functionality of the entire human body. For example, if we talk about the nervous system that involves the brain and the spinal cord, very well developed, very well uh, engaged in all other kinds and forms of coordinations. Musculoskeletal systems are properly developed. Cardiovascular system, respiratory system, and other systems are all well developed. The only and only difference is that the skin does not produce the pigment. In order to mitigate stigma, discrimination and fight for the rights of persons with albinism in Uganda, persons with albinism formed an umbrella organization to play a collective role in advancing the needs and aspirations of persons with albinism. Albinism umbrella was set up as a voice for persons living with albinism in Uganda. It was set up to advocate for persons with albinism in different fora on issues of development. Although the actual population of persons living with albinism is not known due to lack of data and associated stigma and means, it is estimated that there are approximately 20,000 persons with albinism in Uganda. Though there are known hubs where the concentration is high, generally persons with albinism live in remote areas and the rural communities in Uganda. The skin of a person living with albinism is delicate and vulnerable to sun rays, and when it comes to children, it requires extra care. Someone who lacks that pigment, like me, will be subjected to harmful rays of the sun. They become harmful because they are not repelled away from the skin. So they get absorbed into the skin, and they initiate a scary of reactions that starts uh, from reddening of the skin, which we normally call a sunburn, to deeper deteriorations by damaging the cells until we reach the critical climax uh, to the level of precanthalous growth uh, called keratosis, 
and other cancerous growths, and then even obviously skin cancer, and basically the squamous cell carcinoma and the basal cell carcinoma. Cementa Scovia, a mother of four children with three of them living with albinism, had to abandon her teaching job to concentrate on raising her kids. The only challenge I have with these children is the skin. Their skin is so delicate. So whenever they're exposed to the sun, their skin turns to pink. When a child is born with albinism in a family, it creates two things. One, it can break the family or it will unite the family. Quite often, it comes with a social and financial burden. Albinism Umbrella is advocating for the creation of an albinism center where trainings will be carried out in vocational skills to enable these families have sustainable income and therefore improve their standard of living. The Albinism Umbrella Organization has formed partnership with various individuals and government institutions to foster the well-being of persons living with albinism and their families. <laughs> Annually, the Albinism Umbrella, in partnership with Under the Same Sun, Office of the UN High Commissioner for Human Rights in Uganda, Equal Opportunities Commission and the Government of Uganda, organizes activities to mark the International Albinism Awareness Day. The reason for my presence and for the office's presence here is to celebrate the awareness that we want to achieve today. We want Ugandans, we want everybody in the world to appreciate that this constituency exists. People living with albinism. That they desire, they require special assistance. One of the major challenges of persons living with albinism is ultraviolet sun rays, and a person needs sunscreen protection right from birth. I have been doing research on local oils and herbs, and I use these oils and herbs to make soaps, creams, and lotions. Recently, I discovered that there is a group in our community that do not have a specific cream for their skin. And these are people living with albinism. So I have come up with a herbal base organic sunscreen, uh, which I have incorporated 15 essential oils and other active ingredients to protect them. This cream has been tried on a few persons living with albinism, and it has so far showed positive results. But it needs more research. It needs to go through certification and we need mass production so that it can be affordable, available to the ordinary person living with albinism. We require resources to do all this. And among the resources that we need are skin specialists. We call upon skin specialists to come along with us on this journey. Let us join hands to elevate the plight of persons living with albinism. I call upon everybody to rally to this cause so that we can give a, a better life to the albinos who are Ugandans, who are citizens, who are as much entitled to everything we have as all of us do. Albinism umbrella. Hope restored. Mm -hmm.